Honestly, I think that pool would be any members of the Masters 8 except for Ash and Leon. And even against them, it would be really close. This is a tweet that got over 300 likes on Twitter. And it got me thinking, is this really true? Does Paul actually have what it takes to convincingly beat all of the Masters 8 champions? Well, that is the big question of today. And luckily, I'm not alone to tackle such a heated question as I'm joined by my good bro, Vivo. Yo everyone, I'm Vivo, and I'll be helping my bro to break down this controversial take. Hey, thanks for coming along, man. All right, first things first, let's analyze Paul's strengths, weaknesses and accomplishments before we get into debating this. Paul possesses several notable strengths in battle. Firstly, he has the remarkable ability to imitate and understand his opponent's battle styles, even those of champion level opponents. This enables him to quickly grasp the understanding of their strategies and incorporate them into his own arsenal. In addition, Paul never underestimates his opponents. He thoroughly studies them inside and out, familiarizing himself with their strengths, weaknesses, and preferred battle techniques. Regardless of the skill gap between them, this vast amount of knowledge allows him to formulate effective strategies against them. One of Paul's distinctive traits is his ability to adapt and be unorthodox in his fighting style by emulating Ash's approach to combat. He introduces unconventional tactics that catch his opponents off guard. An example of this is Counter Shield. This unpredictability gives him the edge in battle. Furthermore, Paul is adept at utilizing support moves to his advantage. He strategically employs moves like Light Screen and Protect to set up favorable conditions for his team. He is also willing to let his Pokemon take hits in order to activate abilities such as Flame Body on his Magmortal or Urza Ring's Guts ability. Moves that inflict status effects like Smog are also part of Paul's moveset as he understands the value of these moves in disrupting his opponent's strategies. Notably, Paul's Pokemon showcase a high level of skill and control. For instance, his Torterra demonstrates the ability to manipulate the trajectory of its moves, such as Stone Edge. While Paul possesses several strengths in battle, he also has a few notable weaknesses. One of his primary weaknesses is his heavy reliance on knowing his opponent's battle style. Paul excels when he can imitate and understand his opponent's strategies, but if he's unfamiliar with their style, it can put him at a disadvantage. This dependence on prior knowledge limits his ability to adapt to new opponents or unpredictable situations. Another weakness of Paul is his lack of overwhelming strength in his Pokemon lineup, compared to trainers like Alan, Lance, Leon or Iris. However, Paul compensates for this by utilizing his unique battle style and strategies. Furthermore, as Paul's battle patterns and preferences become more apparent during a battle, opponents can easily predict his moves. This predictability can be exploited by an opponent to counter strategies and gain an upper hand. Another area where Paul struggles is his adaptability. He tends to rely heavily on his initial strategies and team composition, making it challenging for him to adjust to unexpected circumstances or change in the battle. Opponents who employ unpredictable tactics or exploit his inflexibility can catch Paul off guard and gain an advantage. Additionally, Paul can be wide open to his opponent's Pokemon's own emotions and determination to win. If his opponents can tap into their Pokemon's motivation or use unique strategies, such as Barry using Empoleon to counter Paul's Urza Ring's Focus Blast, it can catch Paul off guard and disrupt his plans. Despite these weaknesses, Paul's strengths and battle style make him a formidable opponent. However, he needs to work on expanding his adaptability and reducing his reliance on prior knowledge, as this could be easily exploited by any one of the Master 8 trainers. Paul has many great accomplishments in the Pokemon anime, such as beating at least 32 gym leaders from Kanto, Johto, Hoenn and Sinnoh, as well as competing in the Kanto, Johto, Hoenn and Sinnoh leagues, with his highest placing spot being in the top 8 in the Sinnoh league after losing to Ash Ketchum. After his loss against Ash, he had a change of heart as well as view of Pokemon, and this was evident in the fact that he was asked to become a gym leader. Lastly, in Pokemon Journeys, upon Paul's return, Ash asks him why he chose not to participate in the World Championships, implying that Ash perceives Paul as capable and strong enough to compete at world level. Okay, now that we've gathered everything about Paul and his skill set, it's finally time to see if Paul really has what it takes to defeat all Masters 8 trainers. Let us begin. Alright, so this is the gauntlet that Paul's gonna be taking down. 
As you can see, it's filled with all eight Masters 8 trainers and pool will start at round one and end up at round eight. Also, as you can see, it's not in order of the actual trainer's ranking. It's in order of how easy we think it'll be for Paul to take on each of the trainers. Exactly. So, Lance is round one. All right, so first up, we've got round one. Lance, the Kanto and Johto champion. All right. The Kanto and Johto fraud, actually. That's fraud? What why, why do you say he's a fraud? Uh, in this, I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain. You can explain Lance for first. All right, cool. So, when it comes to Lance, it's an interesting take. I believe, me personally, that Paul would easily run through Lance. And I agree. I think that Paul, like, you know, Paul's a good, he's a very good intelligent battler and same with Lance. However, I feel like Lance is too aggressive with his power. And this was really evident when we saw him get battling against Diantha, where- Lance is way too straightforward. Yeah, way too straightforward. Cause his attacks are very simple. And I don't know if that's just how the anime wanted to portray him, but with that mm -hmm. tremendous power, it tends to leave him open for counters, which is something Paul, I think, would easily capitalize on and just exploit him so, like, you know, so soon. Yeah, especially because Paul's main thing is his, like, wide range of arsenal of Pokemon and moves and all that stuff. Mm. But Lance is a dragon type trainer, apart from Gyarados, dragon type trainer who goes headstrong. He does not back down from a challenge. Yeah. He is, as we saw against Diantha, like, Diantha was a fairy type trainer, but mm -hmm. Lance chose to go all out. Yeah, he, he chose to like, you know, that. yeah, like utilize his power and just like, you know what? Yeah, like I don't care like what um, type of advantage you have. Let me just go all out. But I feel like mm -hmm. as soon as Paul figures out Lance's attack patterns, then I just believe he just walks through Lance and it's like GG. Like as soon as he realizes Lance like, oh, this is how he battles. Pies. He doesn't even have powers. <laughs> he's just... He's just attack. <laughs> Hyper Beam, go. Hyper Beam, go, recharge. Ah, oh, it is over. Yeah. It's over for sure. All right. Yeah, so, in fact, in fact, Hyper Beam against Diantha was one of the worst things. Like, I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah, same. All right. So, we've decided that Pool, he makes it past round one. All right. Next up, we have Iris. Fan favorite, you know, the Unova champion. Of course, of course, which is round two. Now, Vivo, what's your take on Paul against Iris? Because I know there's this gonna be... one's controversial. Yeah, it's, it's a very controversial. controversial. One. I know a lot of people have a lot of passion for Iris as well. I'm not gonna lie, Twitter. You can you can cancel me if you want to, but Iris is getting easily defeated as well. I'm I, saying it. I I strongly disagree with the easily defeated. I I mean. Nah, I'm standing by it. Easily defeated. I mean, I think that Iris. You know, this would be. I feel like. Iris would certainly give Lance, you know, a much more harder... Uh, Iris would give Paul a much more challenge than w with what Lance would give, in my opinion. Because the difference with Iris, at least she has some sort of strategy, even though she's relying on just, like, natural instincts. She still uses her Pokemon's natural instincts to guide her, st her strategy, you know? So there is yeah, some yeah. sort of plan or some sort of, you know strategy that iris tries to go to when she's trying to defeat an opponent but of course with lance if we're comparing that um paul he's just straightforward so paul is just like boom i got you i'll win but against iris it's definitely going to be a harder fight it would be a harder fight but it's still an easy fight in my eyes yeah i, I do is, agree with that to the an thing extent. about iris the thing about iris is that she is a very good trainer very powerful that's her main thing powers yeah. like her main thing especially with Haxorus it's, mm -hmm. it's a dangerous Pokemon mm -hmm. but at the same time especially because of that Cynthia match I saw and the fact she lost to Ash back yeah. in the Ultra class uh, I think it was Super class Super class yeah but her drag her Haxorus has shown to me it's not a good enough ace that it can really stand up with all these other Pokemon mm. of course her opponents were two of the top trainers in the world mm -hmm. but still Haxorus, it doesn't give me enough. Mainly because we haven't seen much of it apart yeah. from its L's. But, but I do believe it doesn't that give enough. Like, yeah, I do believe that she, that Iris has the potential to be the best champion out of every single trainer here, but just not yet. At this moment, like current moment, I don't believe that a current Iris defeats Paul. In my opinion, she's strong, yeah. and I feel like in the future she could. But as of right now, she doesn't have the experience that. Paul has and you know the capabilities of battling that to the extent that Paul has so yeah true plus another thing the Draco meteor attack that Cynthia used Iris couldn't really do anything to counter that mm. all she could do was sit and try and hit some away and like 
it, it was working, but it didn't work. And yeah, in the end. she like, didn't have she another plan. Yeah, she didn't have another plan to fall on if worst comes to worst. Which I feel like Paul would have some sort of plan to defend himself against a move like that. So yeah, because yeah. Haxorus needs to. Well, I think it needs to get in close to really do stuff. Like it's a physical. Yeah, Pokemon yeah, it's more phys- it is a physical. It is a physical Pokemon is indeed. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, and also another thing. The rest of her team because it's not just dragon it's not just haxorus it's mm-hmm. also dragonite excadrill yeah those two dragonite especially is really holding her team back because we saw it get taken out easily with easily by C- cynthia like, i was really surprised when i saw that i couldn't even believe that dragonite um fell so uh, easily to milotic it was crazy yeah, it was way too way too easy and i feel like Pokemon yeah, yeah i feel like a simple attack like that who would easily be able to just do something like that to Iris and she just wouldn't see it coming and boom, it's already onto the, you know, Haxorus is down to Haxorus to get the win and do all the work, you know, back up. Because of course- It's true, it's yeah, true. The rest of the team the kind of about, lacks. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing about um, Dragonite, my main issue is it doesn't really have anything special about it. Like it can fly, yeah, that's cool. But Paul, the thing about Paul is he sets up those, like these things, when it comes he's he's like a competitive battle yeah he sets yeah. up light screen he'll set up protect he'll use all of his moves mm. that and when you'll... dragonite goes in for a heavy blow he'll protect and then counter back yeah he's similar to ash in yeah. that way as well yeah i do like agree. he can attack mid air all those type of things yeah so... as much as i love iris i think it's clear that paul makes it past round two and goes yep. on to round three which of course is the boy the fan favorite another one another popular pokemon character in the community we have the man himself steven stone steven stone indeed all right for this one i'll ask you do you think paul's making it through yes i do believe that paul confidently not super like convincingly but confidently does beat the does beat steven yeah i agree again like steven i feel really bad for steven his match against ash was really like unfair mm. in the way that he should have won mm-hmm but of course ash is the main character like he was he wasn't destroying ash but mega mega um Meta Meta Bruce. Bruce was going crazy yeah like, it was wild and like, didn't touch it at all no until the uh, z move came out and boom it was a win but i feel like with how poop has prepared ash for steven um that little pre- preparation and with the fact that Paul can imitate and understand uh, champion level trainers uh, strategies and battle styles yeah yeah like he literally prepared ash to to take on steven so what makes yeah, it yeah. and and, so, and, the, and the fact that he was using pokemon that he just caught to prepare him for that that's not even his like his main team that's not even his you know his mm-hmm, og boys mm-hmm. the electivire the um, urza ring agron all of that it's not those pokemon these are just pokemon he prepared for ash which makes me believe exactly. he would easily be able to prepare for steven and understand like yo i know he's gonna do this and he's like That's kind of Paul's main quality yeah, yeah his his main um ability uh skill set as well so yeah he prepares for these things steven is a rock fight or steel type trainer one yeah. of the two he, defense and... is like a big part of his um his own strategy and of course he has that very much calm demeanor when he battles and he does use effective strategies <laughs> however i believe those strategies would be outsmarked or um, Paul would come prepared already so it's not like he's gonna be su- mm-hmm. surprised by whatever Steven brings I feel like he would come prepared for Steven and that would be a convincing you know a confident win in my opinion yeah in fact like it's really crazy to say although we put Steven round three mm. apart from Meg- Mega Metagross I could say that even Iris could beat Steven like Mega Metagross is a dangerous Pokemon don't get me wrong mm. it's very dangerous it's super fast it's hard to track it's mm. bad. You Ash didn't even hit it apart from the Z move, as we said. Mm-hmm. But because of Pokemon like Agron, who got Willow Wisp and was pretty much out of the match. Yeah, and, and Cray Dilly. Yeah, Cray Dilly did some stuff. You know, it did set up um Ingrain. Yeah, and dangerous stuff, strategy. But, but I feel like I don't. I don't see. I can see Paul easily. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Up with something like, against that. It's that, not. It's something that Paul would be able to understand. Yeah, I understand the situation. Let me find a plan yeah, B. Yeah. Let me find another opportunity to you know, take the win. Because the thing. The thing about Ash, the reason why Ash struggled against Steven is because Ash is very, he adapts very well, but at the same time, he doesn't like know all these tactics. Yeah. That's the thing. He's not like experienced in the way of seeing these tactics. Mm-hmm. But Paul, 
literally it's, i could see paul using a cray dilly with ingrain like literally it's not like something foreign to him he yeah he, he's something he's very it. familiar with understanding and of course but even before that he would study like steven's bowser he'll study these possible yeah, know, like, possible opportunities and possibilities of happening so he'll know yeah he'll be very familiar um so yeah another the main thing i want to say before for the, the way i see that paul could defeat mega metagross is with the Pokemon like Magmortal, like mm. if you can get off a physical hit and then get Flame Body, the Burn. Yeah, the Burn. I think that would stop. Done. Yeah, like as soon the as burn, the status Burn goes crazy in the anime. Yeah, um, as soon as the status, any I feel like any status effect hits Steven's Pokemon, all of them, I feel like it's pretty much wraps, and that was like his yeah, main weakness. Is. Like, Bro's got amazing defense and has a lot. His Pokemon can endure and maintain their position on the battlefield. However, once the status condition hits, I think that's where it's wraps for Steven. And and that's yeah, something it's, like it's Paul over. would bring, like, you know, his winning. Paul's, he's got he's got um paralyzed from Electivire, mm. his ace. Mm. He's got flame body from Magmortal. Yeah, so the burn. Yeah. He's it got he's got it pretty much all. Yeah, so yeah. Alright. So Paul does in fact move on from round three and he goes over to round four. The model. We have the Kalos Queen. Diantha. And this is where Paul stops. This is where Paul stops? No, no, no. I'm joking. <laughs> this is not where Paul <laughs> stops. But this is probably his hardest fight. I think so. Diantha's round four. This yeah. is his hardest fight to get past. Like, I'm debating here for Paul, but I, I, I'm I, struggling to see him beating Mega Gardevoir. That's my issue. Same. That is like, that's the big threat Pokemon out of all of this. Like, and I think it was very clear in the Masters 8 even against Leon, and we have to remember that even though uh, Diantha did get swept by um, Leon, Mega Gardevoir, yeah. oh my god, what a menace. If it was. That, that's it, crazy. If it did that final move against Charizard, against any one of these, you know, other trainers on the list, I feel like it it's might over. have been GG for them. Like, literally. That's, like, it is. It's very true. There's a reason why she got to the semi finals. Like, Diantha, yeah. in XY, in XY, don't get me wrong, Diantha was mid. She mm. was not that trainer. Like Ash nearly beat her, which mm. is still crazy. Yeah. But I don't know what happened between then. She she got good and mm -hmm. real good. Yeah, like, like she she really understood like the point of using support moves such as light screen, reflect, mm -hmm. and trick or treat, and using like setups, yeah. you know, to to have it like you know to have an easier way for Mega Gardevoir to get the finish. And she really yeah, understood yeah. that um that concept. And she's also mm -hmm. you know. She's very perspective of her opponent's strategies and she can yeah. really tell attack patterns and create a counter instantly. And of course, that's yeah, how she that's, was able to play around with. Yeah, she was able to play around with Lance and saw, yeah, like how pool battles saw, OK, this is a weakness. Let me just exploit that and use that as my advantage to win. And I feel like that's the problem. Diantha and Paul are quite similar in understanding, you know, attack patterns and etc. And that's why, yeah. you know, it would give um you know, Paul a really good run for his money. And in fact, the weakness of Paul in this situation is that Paul prepares for his opponents. Like mm. he, he comes with the knowledge, oh, this is my opponent. This is the type of stuff they'll do. Mm -hmm. But because of that, Amph is so quick to adapt yeah. that she can, Easily. her strategy, she can change it in, in the match, yeah. like during the match. A, a, flip, a flick choice. of the um, finger, like boom. Of the switch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah Straight. Immediately. But I do believe that with them both understanding Cell Muse, who, of course, is no stranger to certain stuff like light screen. He's seen these yeah, type of yeah. things before. And then uh, knowing mm -hmm. that he's swapped out and swapped in and using different Pokemon with different roles to be able to adapt to these um exactly these obstacles. So I do believe this would be a very hard fight and definitely the hardest fight as of right now. But I do think by a smear edge, like a smear, a smear, Paul does win. Also, in fact, I want to say... This is, although Paul has no mechanics, let's not get that wrong. He does have no mechanics. Mm. Electivire as his ace. We can't, like, you can't forget about that Pokemon. Electivire is powerful. Very even powerful. Even though it lost. Yeah. Even though it lost, it's very powerful. It I should not agree. be taken lightly. I can I can still see Electivire putting up a great fight against Mega Gardevoir. Mm -hmm. And I feel and like it would be a team effort win rather than an ace versus... Exactly. Ace battle, yeah. It will be a team, a team win, uh, rather than if yeah. we compare the the aces, because of course Mega Gardevoir is stronger than Electivire. However, I feel mm -hmm. like Paul's other Pokemon would put in that work to allow Electivire to win, regardless of having Mega Evolution or not. In fact, I'm saying it now. 
the way because of the way Paul fights, I say that Diantha's team pretty much gets swept with Paul just choosing a Pokemon, returning, mm -hmm. choosing a Pokemon, returning until Mega Gardevoir has to fight six Pokemon that are like half health. Mm. And she and it's not lasting that long. Mm. It's not. Even if it's like a round three, I still believe like um a three V three. If it's three V three, yeah. Like I still believe that uh like Paul would struggle is, Paul would struggle once it does get to Mega Gardevoir. Mm -hmm. But already the previous two Pokemon would have already done enough work for Electivire to get that win, you know? So yeah. And who said Electivire has to finish it anyway? He can use a fire type, for yeah, example. Indeed. Or indeed. a dark type. A dark type. Weavile mm. can it's fast, it's very fast. Pikachu, um it's something Pikachu, Paul Staraptor would, couldn't catch it. Yeah, it's like, something that um so, Paul would do anyways. It, it doesn't have to be Electivire to get the win. And yeah. Something as surprising as that, I feel like Paul would have, you know, he would have planned and studied Diantha and know, yeah, like the same with Steven, yeah. study, know what is what they're capable I'm of. I'm up against Psychic Fairy type, I know this. Yeah. I just need to pick a Steel type, for example. I 100% agree. He has an Aggron, it's over just like that. Alright, so, so yeah. alright, seems like we all agree that Paul does in fact make it past round four. So well done to Paul so far, he's done well, okay, he's beaten... I think we all agree that he beats these four champions. Now, yeah. round difficult, five. Difficult, but yes, he can beat them. Round five, yeah. Difficult, but yeah, he can beat them. Round five. We do have the Kalos League winner. My boy. So I might be a little biased here, but my boy, Alan. This is a rival battle and pretty much decides, you know, is who's the stronger rival of Ash? Is it Paul or Alan? And I mean, I've got a lot to say personally. I don't think that Paul could handle Alan's intensity. As much as like, you know, he's a, a very intelligent battler, I feel like Alan has the tendency to overwhelm his opponents a lot, you know? And that that could catch Paul off guard very easily, quite quickly even. You're not gonna like what I'm gonna say, bro. You're not gonna <laughs> oh, no. like it. You're not What's gonna this? like it. What is this? Alan, on this on this chart, Alan should probably be round two wow round two because alan as a trainer i'm not gonna lie he, he went crazy in xy he mm -hmm. went crazy and and even in journeys like his chest knot it's, it's pretty impressive i won't lie and his, his charizard of course is still as good as always but because of his performance against leon i cannot see alan is strong anymore i will never be able to see it it, it completely changed i can him. hear what you're and saying that i do reason, i do understand where you're coming from for that reason, I can see Alan easily getting destroyed by Paul. I have to just, strongly disagree. Just, I have to. I know what you're, you're where you're coming from, but we have to remember that Alan's Charizard has amazing endurance. It took down ten Mega Evolutions in a row. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, Alan did lose to Leon, which of course is the best Pokemon trainer in the world. I do believe they did slack mm -hmm. a little. In my opinion, I do feel like they slacked a little bit when it comes to the power scaling of Elan, like making him do flare blitz just to go into Dragon Pulse. However, I just feel like that was more so a writing issue because if you go back and watch his battles in an X and Y, he literally, like Elan is able to, you know, he knows his limits and he's also a reserved battler. So he doesn't just do one option if it doesn't work out. He tries to find another way by returning his Pokemon and bringing them out. And also the mm -hmm. fact that Alan does use an unpredictable battle style that catches people off guards. And then he even follows up with tremendous, you know, powerful moves. And of course, Alan's my boy, but I do believe that he could overwhelm, you know, Paul. Paul doesn't have Mega Evolution and he doesn't have tremendous power, which Alan does have. And I feel like he could easily get a quick KO on one of Paul's Pokemon and disrupt his plans, you know? Yeah, I hear what you say, but it's the same as Diantha, if not easier, in the same that in the way that his team, Alan's team is is it's not that special, honestly. It's not that special. I don't Paul's think his team is much special. I do agree with that. But the mm -hmm. fact that him his him the trainer himself, he's able to, you know, use the field to his advantage. He's able to quickly analyze um situations and adapt swiftly, which is something that um, Paul can struggle on, you know, in certain certain situations. And I feel like he would be able to, you know, use calculated precise, precise attacks, which, you know, Lance doesn't really have, Iris doesn't really have, and little stuff like that, if we're comparing those two, I feel like he outweighs them and in the fact that he'll be able to um, defeat Paul. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you're trying to say. But you have to remember, in terms of unpredictability, Alan, yeah, I can see that. We have to remember, Paul is a lot is Ash's perfect rival. He mm. is Ash's mirror. Mm. But also, not just is he Ash's mirror, he also copies from Ash himself. True. He takes Ash's stuff. Counter Shield, Alan would have never seen at that point. Mm. Paul could bring it out right there. Let's say they're in round one. He could bring it out right there in the 3v3. Mm -hmm. I don't think Alan is prepared for anything of that. I do, I do agree, I do agree with, with that. I, I do agree with that. And I feel like if he does bring out a strategy an unpredictable strategy on the same level of Ash, then yeah, I could see Alan losing. I could also see Alan losing to any uh, potential status condition. Same with Steven. If exactly. Alan gets never... hit, yeah, he, Alan, we've never seen Alan deal with a status condition. So if he was to I plan something- I see him something... going down to a paralysis. It's just like, just like that. Charizard's done from paralysis. Because mm. he's never like, he's never had to deal with anything like that. He's only had to fight yeah. in brute strength. And I won't like it, brute strength, he's taken out on Electivire. Mm -hmm. but because of I do believe that in, because if of it, things, it, light screen. Yeah, I do believe Last if it is isn't doing anything. I do. Anymore. I do Protect. believe. I do believe if it's um an ace versus ace battle, then Alan has the upper hand and would defeat um Mega Charizard would defeat Electivire. However, if it does come to more intelligence strategy based, and he does use a status condition, then yeah. As much as my boy, he, as much as Alan's my boy, yeah. Paul's gonna. He's Paul's gonna win. I think I think he's got it. I think he's got it in the bag. As I said, easier match. than the others. In my opinion, I feel like it's a close match. But yeah, I'll give it to Paul. He moves past round five. Oh, oh no. All right, round six. <laughs> uh, it might be over, boys. It, it might, might it over. might be end of the run. We have round six, the Sinnoh Queen, Cynthia. The Menace. You know, the Menace. Now, Indeed. I feel like this is the ultimate test for Paul. Like, this is everything he's worked up to up until this point. And yeah. as much as it was the same thing for Ash, like the ultimate test, the big, you know, the big opponent we all wanted to see him take down, this is the same thing for Paul. And does he really have what it takes, you know, to take Cynthia down? I don't, I don't you know. know. What? You know what? I'm saying it. I think Paul could take down Cynthia. I think he could. I feel like it's a big could. Could. I think it, it, it's a big could, but I think he can. Once again, I'm going back to the thing of him being the perfect mirror of Ash. He, although Paul doesn't, is not one to show his emotions, really. Mm. I still believe, like, we've seen him in journeys. He smiles. It's not that he doesn't show his emotions at all. Mm -hmm. He, he's a character who keeps his cool. And I think he, Although he does all that stuff with his emotions, I think he still has the will to want to win yeah, against I, someone like Cynthia. And like, I feel like that is what um, Cynthia would bring that out of Paul. Like no yeah. other opponent on this uh, list would bring out the will to win. And that's something we mm. haven't really seen with Paul, like something like, you know, using that will to win. However, when we, and, I, and this is a big however, we need to remember that Cynthia is literally one of the best Pokemon battlers in the whole world. She is literally so versatile. She has tactical planning, mm. powerhouse Pokemon, support moves, and she even uses status conditions as well. And then, of course, on top of that, she even gives an, an, an analytical approach and is very calm and composed, like exactly like Paul, even 10 mm. times better. And I feel like because of that, she understands the importance of using things like support moves, status conditions in battles, and then she utilizes moves like Stealth Rock, Reflect, Light Screen, and other support moves, you know, to set up an advantage for yeah. her team. And I feel like if Cynthia does take control of the battlefield, because that's one of her main things, she loves to be in control of the whole battle. We literally saw that throughout literally Ash versus Cynthia. She was the one in control for pretty much the whole thing, and Ash had to just work his way out to try out smart and use his aura power and strength to you know make up for that level gap because if he didn't have aura look mega lucario i think it would have been raps uh, quite early on he needed surfetch and lucario to use their strengths to outweigh the big gap that's between them and i feel like with paul lacking in that department when it comes to strength he doesn't have dynamax he doesn't have mega evolution i just feel like that is what he lacks and Cynthia would just take control and then in the end it would be Electivire versus Garchomp and Dynamax Garchomp or Mega Garchomp would win. In my opinion. Yeah, I understand, I understand. Mm. But once again, I know I'm falling back on the same thing. 
But the thing is, even in Diamond and Pearl, like mainly in Diamond and Pearl, they made sure to emphasize the fact that Ash and, Ash and Paul really wanted to defeat Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Like, and even Cynthia said sure that Cynthia said that um, Paul and Ash would make it to you know the World Championships in the future. Yeah, of course Paul didn't enter, but we know he probably he could have if he wanted to. One hundred percent, he and, definitely could have. And and I think that Paul does have what it takes to be you know to be. Lance, Iris, Steven, and Diantha. But I just feel like Cynthia is just, just, he's not yet, he's not there yet. He can't beat Cynthia because there's little things like being able to, like Cynthia causes confusion with a, a, with the opponent. We saw that Ash was confused by a lot of things that was going on and he was really um, worried by what's going to happen next. Is, is Cynthia going to bring out Dynamax? Is she going to bring out Mega Evolution? Boom, he, she brought out Dynamax. Ash was not expecting that at all. Like, I feel like Paul would not be able to um, quickly, you know, his plan would be disrupted by what Cynthia has to offer in their match. And I do know that Paul would come plan for this match. However, Cynthia would just disrupt those plans, you know, in mm. my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely not an easy one at all for Paul. Yeah, I at don't all. know. It would I be can't really... It would be such a close match. It would come down to the wire if it, if anything. If not, I could see like Cynthia towards the end, just like the Iris match, just taking that convincing win. Yeah, I see what you mean. All right, because we're at this point, I say now's the time to introduce the trump card. All let's right. say, let's say Paul now has access to any mechanic he, he wants in in terms of Dynamax or Mega Evolution, not Z move, because that's like Ash's thing. Yeah. So. Let's say we gave Paul. All right, so um, let, let, let's say okay. I I think that Paul does in fact stop at round six without any mechanic. Mm, Can we mm. agree on that? Yeah, without any mechanic, yeah, yeah. Paul stops at Cynthia. However, with a mechanic, Mega Evolution or Dynamax, I do believe he can get past Cynthia because he yeah. then he would have that power to get past, and he gets the extra boost he needs. Yeah, I do agree. So, okay, so Paul does in fact stop at Cynthia. However, if we do have mechanics, we're on to round seven. Mm -hmm. The former world champion himself, Leon. Pretty much the perfect battler. Where do you think this goes, Vivo? It's over. It's it already <laughs> over. It's already over. It's over. I do agree as well. I don't feel like, like Paul, even with a mechanic or not, Paul literally just gets pretty much destroyed like he does put up a fight but he just gets destroyed leon is a wall he is a he's a wall for all trainers there's mm. i don't i the thing about leon is only ash could defeat him mm -hmm. only ash even cynthia could not defeat leon in yeah. my eyes i feel like cynthia would give it's... leon a, a close match but he she can't she can't beat leon yeah no in fact i couldn't even see cynthia giving leon a close match because of because of the type of person he is the type of trainer mm. like we saw Diane forget dismantled by Leon. Like he he takes out everyone he battles with ease. He, yeah. he defeated he defeated Lance, Diantha, Alan, all those trainers. And he, he didn't really struggle with them either. Mm. Like, I feel like Cynthia just... would give Leon a run for his money, but then I feel like Cynthia would do much better than Paul against Leon, in my opinion, maybe like maybe around the yeah. same level. But Leon would just be able to work around, you know, Paul because he, he's literally the perfect battler. He's gifted in like all areas. Strategies, he's also too strong. He's yeah, just strategies generally just, way too strong. Yeah, strategies don't really work on Leon. And the fact that Leon's ab adaptability is pretty much Ashes, like Ashes, you know? It's very similar in that aspect. And he's able to rapidly teach his Pokemon improvised, um, improvised techniques. So he's able to, you know, implement Ash's counter shield the same way of how Paul implements counter shield into his own tactics. He's able to learn from his opponents at a much faster rate mm. to compare to, you know, someone of the likes of Paul. And I just feel like Leon with that, and now we forgot to add his tremendous amount of power. We forgot to add his, mm -hmm. you know, mechanic is is pretty much GG for our boy. Yeah. Yeah. There's just he does not make nothing. it past round seven. <laughs> I don't. You can't prep for Leon. Yeah, you, you can't, can't prep for Leon. You, you just have to give it your all. Or you just have to be then, him. Like, you have to be him. And if you you're not him, him yeah. you're not. If you're not Ash Ketchum, you you can't. Yeah. You can't get past Leon. And yeah. Um. Yeah. Paul does stop. Paul's run ends. Round and seven. So down. So yeah. Round seven is over. Round eight. 
the current world champion, our boy Ash Ketchum. I feel like, funny this enough, this battle would be, it would be closer <laughs> than Leon. Than, yeah, than same. Leon, because so, of the type of person Ash is. Yeah, and the, also the type of person Paul is. The fact that they're mm -hmm. pretty much perfect opposites. Um, yeah. We literally saw in their match, the training match, that Paul was able to defeat one of Ash's world level Pokemon. With a Pokemon that wasn't even part of his main with, team. With a Pokemon that wasn't even part of his main team. A Pokemon that was exactly. used to train Ash. Now, think mm -hmm. what would happen if we're using Electivire, the OG boys. I feel like that match would be close. Maybe even very much similar to the Diamond Pearl match. Or maybe you a little bit... You have to remember. Mm -hmm. um, Ash does not have Chim... Uh, Ash does not have Infernape this time. He does not have that... He doesn't have that Pokemon that really wants to defeat Paul. Mm, That's the that thing personal that makes Ash win in Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, that personal That's connection. It was Blaze. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. Blaze. I feel like Blaze was the, you know, the gap. That motivation, that want to win yeah. was more on Ash's side. However, with this fight, there is no bad blood. There is no, you know, any like yeah, negative. It's more so just which of us is the two. And I feel like Ash is be the better trainer. However, it would be maybe more, more so closer. Just because mm -hmm. of that especially as i'd like to see for this fight in my opinion uh lucario mega lucario would be the ace of this match in my eyes but because of mm -hmm. the fact it's a steel type brick break from electrify is devastating mm. you saw what it did to glyscore glyscore mm -hmm. got his head shot yeah 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 so it hit like a truck for real it, it hits like a truck always electrify all electrifies hit so hard mm -hmm. in anime. And I so, yeah, I feel like Lucara would be tested so badly. Even to the fact that we've seen that Lucara went down to um, Dragapult's Flamethrower by Leon. And, exactly. like, Lucara is not the invincible A. So, even at that, it's yeah, just going to be... Greninja. Yeah, it's not Greninja. It's not Infernape level. Um, mm -hmm. When we're talking about the aspect of taking the hits and just not going down, I feel like there is a chance that Lucara could go down to uh, Paul. Maybe it would go down yeah. to Pikachu uh, being the deciding factor in this match, I do believe. Um, well, it depends because if Pikachu's not using its Z move, then it's useless because of Motor mm, Drive. Yeah, so it, it probably would go down to a Mega Evolution battle. But of course, even at that, Paul is an amazing trainer. However, he does mm -hmm. not make it past Ash rounding. He's still my goat, though. He's still my goat. W guy, not my goat. Alas, my goat. But pool. The lines made, but yeah, we yeah. moved. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I, 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 this was a very exciting discussion, a great discussion to have, and I know it's a big mm -hmm. heated, you know, question in the community right now. Does Paul really beat the Masters Eight? And I feel like he, he beats everyone except for Cynthia, Leon, and Ash. Those are the Honestly, three he can't defeat. I'd say the tweet is still true. I'd say that he could. He could. It's a big could, as we said. When it comes to Cynthia. Beat, yeah. He could beat them apart from Leon and Yeah, Leon Ash. and Ash, there's no way. There's no way. But Cynthia, but Cynthia is a big, I feel, a big could. I still feel if he could. He probably could. Mm. If he really wants it. He's pro If he's like prepared, if he knows, if he has a mechanic, all that stuff. If he's on equal level with her, I think he could beat Cynthia. I personally don't but believe otherwise. that Paul could. With, but, but I think he could at the same time. So I'm quite 50-50 on that one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say a massive thank you to my bro Vivo for coming along in today's discussion. It was sick. My pleasure, man, and thanks for having me on the channel. I'd love to appear again. Credits to Gozi on Twitter for making the tweet in the first place. Be sure to check out Vivo's channel where he covers all things Pokemon manga. So, if you're interested, I definitely recommend you check him out. As always, be sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for everything Pokemon anime related. Thank you for watching.